for Business is sponsored by Kingston Smith Chartered Accountants. Hello, I'm Trevor Meriden and welcome to The Business, the show that's essential listening for the West Hearts business community. Tonight we continue our mentoring month for February, showing how businesses can grow and prosper through use of mentoring. In our last show, Vicky Scott looked at how coaching and mentoring within a business unlocks individual and collective potential. This week we look outside the walls of every business and ask why, when it comes to mentoring, we need to all give to get. How can mentoring out in the wider community drive forward your understanding of your own business? It's a fascinating subject, and to help us understand, we have Katerina Rudiger, Head of Skills and Policy Campaigns at the CIPD. She runs Steps Ahead Mentoring, which finds business mentors for young people seeking work. And we'll also be talking to Michael Moran from 1080, a major contributor to our previous mentoring show, who explains why businesses need to look beyond their walls for their own good as much as others. Then there's the mentors and mentees themselves. We've been talking to them. Barry Hoffman, Group HR Director at Computer Centre in Hatfield, tells us how he's benefited from mentoring others. And Simon and Louis tell us their experiences of being a mentor and mentee respectively. It's going to be a busy, busy show, as always, and delighted to have Claire McAnulty in the studio with me. How are you this week, Claire? Yes, very well. Thanks, Trevor. And uh, 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 should we start with your story or should we start with my story? Yeah, I could start with my story. This was one I noticed early on in the week. So it's a story that, that was in the sort of back pages, if you like, on Monday. And the story really was um, just a man n- normally just going to his work um, in the middle of London, gets on the underground. He, s- he stands aside to let a woman pass. And in doing that, goes in front of this young guy. And the young right. guy got quite annoyed okay. and sort of swore at him. I wouldn't say what he said, but he sort of swore at him and pushed past him. Um, so the man then just, not a great start to his Monday morning, but just continued on to his work, uh, got to his work. He works as a recruitment manager. Right. And you know what's coming next. The first applicant <laughs> comes in for the job and it's yeah. the same young guy that has just, you know, sworn at him and pushed past him. And the joke was that he, um, the young guy, didn't didn't clock right away that this was the man that he'd sworn at. Yeah. And um, I think eventually he, the, the man whose name is Matt Buckland, told him that you know this morning yeah. and and funnily enough didn't didn't get the job didn't yeah. give him the job <laughs> but but the 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 big thing really was that he tweeted it so Matt Buckland tweeted tweeted um that this was karma and said the guy who pushed, pushed past me on the tube and then suggested I go something myself it just arrived for his interview with me and he's now had 21,000 retweets and he's had 20,000 favourites on his tweet um, so I suppose the moral is just be, be, be nice to everyone don't you know I know in the rush hour is stressful for everyone but it uh, just shows you they probably lost out on a job because right. of it and if you know what that swear was why not get in contact <laughs> no I'm just joking I'm just joking um, I think uh, if you see the tweet um, you can easily find it on Twitter you'll um, you'll understand what we mean now that's uh, a good moral be nice to a story now my my uh, story is actually related to tonight's theme um uh, unemployment the headline figures said and i always go on about headline figures fell to uh, 1.86 million uh, this this week or at least it was announced this week however for the october to december period the unemployment rate for um 16 uh, to 24 year olds was 16.2 percent which was unchanged from the uh, the previous quarter but um if you look a bit behind the figures, you'll actually find that uh, youth unemployment is creeping up again. Not very much. I mean, it was more or less for statistical purposes, sort of fairly static, but it did actually inch up 3,000. And uh, and I think it's also a feature that, that youth unemployment is consistently higher than the adult empl- unemployment rate. So we need to look at ways to actually uh, bringing this down further. It's always interesting, isn't it, Claire, to, uh, to look at the numbers behind the numbers. And, and they're never quite as... Either the rosy or disastrous as the as the politicians say but it's often the the subsets of those numbers that make a difference and in fact sort of form a bit of a bedrock of, of tonight's time yeah show. i think as well quite often the numbers are based on what the rules are at the time of of the numbers you yeah. know quite often 
the, the there were different rules the last time the numbers were taken, so you can't you can't always compare them directly. Yeah. Okay. All right then. Uh, should we go into a uh, into a in, into a break? And uh, we're going to uh, be back talking about the theme of our show, which is mentoring outside the business, uh, straight after these uh, announcements. The business sponsored by Kingston Smith Chartered Accountants. Radio Verulam Community Partners. Trestle Art Space is a community art space and registered charity situated in Russet Drive in Highfield Park, home to Trestle Theatre Company and world renowned Trestle Masks. We offer a wide range of arts based activities as well as professional theatre shows, monthly live music showcases with licensed bar and a gallery cafe with exhibitions from local artists. Our 100 year old converted chapel is also available to hire for weddings, private parties and business meetings. To find out more, please visit our website at trestle.org.uk and please support us in bringing affordable arts to our community. For more on Radio Verulam Community Partners, go to radioverulam.com slash community partners. Join Simon Carver on Fridays from 6.30pm for The Film Guide. We look at the UK Cinema Box Office Top 10, a selection of the new cinema releases and the best of the week's films on free-to-air TV. That's Fridays from 6.30pm on West Hearts Drive Time with Danny Smith. Exclusively on Radio Varulam 92.6 FM. You're listening to The Business on Radio Verulam. We're the voice of the local business community on 92.6 FM and on RadioVerulam.com. Okay, let's get down to it, to the theme of our show for this week. Uh, we look outside the walls of every business and look at why, when it comes to mentoring, how we should all give something to get something. How can mentoring out in the wider community drive forward uh, our understanding of our own businesses? Now, uh, in the last show, Vicky Scott, I think, uh, by common consent, did a fantastic job in convincing you all of the business case for coaching and mentoring within your organisation. And thanks ever so much to everybody for uh, their feedback on, on the show. Um, so simple mentoring uh, so underused and yet so effective as a tool for improving uh, your business and and those within it so we're going to go stage further this week and we're all so busy as business people that we spend too much time looking after num whether number one whether that's as individuals or the company itself but what if we actually needed to look beyond ourselves uh, in ABC PLC to the world outside if we could help others and help our own understanding in the process wouldn't that be fantastic um, well you can actually Actually, uh, because we're here to make the case this evening that uh, the mentoring outside of your business is a, is a great thing. And what better place to start than where we left off uh, with Michael Moran, who, as uh, listeners will remember, is CEO of 1080, specialist in leadership development careers and yes coaching and, and mentoring they run mentoring programs for big businesses like mbna here in the in the uk in which teams of fledging fledgling leaders go and work and mentor local charities and learn far more in the process about the world outside than they could ever have imagined but why i asked michael when i caught up with him the other day would any business go outside for their experiences when there's so much on their plate at home already reason, Trevor, um, and that's to do with pace of change in business today. What, what, what we're seeing is that the technological train driving businesses is getting faster and faster. And you just have to think about what was a very successful business like BlackBerry, um, which has been superseded by smartphones. Now, the key to being able to adjust to rapidly changing business environments is developing this thing I call learning agility, which is around learning um, about what's happening out there and being able to respond to it quickly. And mentoring, and certainly with mentoring inside um, other businesses to your own is fundamental to that, because it will help develop your learning agility. Okay, so, I mean, whilst a, uh, one reason why people might not or might argue against it might be, oh, well, charity sort of begins at home, actually, um, you know, if you go outside, it really helps you adjust to the, the marketplace. Yeah, absolutely. It increases your level of market intelligence. It presents you with a whole new set 
of problems that you're probably not experiencing. And more importantly, it probably shows you different ways of tackling the same problems. So external mentoring, spending time in different businesses and different sectors is absolutely critical to both organisational success and your personal career success. Now, I think by uh, by everybody's understanding, this is a big, big area. Mentoring comes in many shapes and forms. Uh, so as a case study for the purposes of this show, we're going to focus on mentoring young people, uh, particularly those who are struggling to uh, find a job. I've already mentioned the uh, recent uh, youth unemployment figures about how they're just starting to... You know, the, the gains that have been made over the last couple of years from the, the dark days when unemployment was for youth, for young people, was about one million, have gone down. But now they're just bottoming out and starting to creep up again. Gains have been made, but there's clearly a need for programmes which bridge the world of employment with that in which many young people are struggling to get that first toehold in the world of work. Now, you may remember uh, previously we had a guest um, on, on a show last year, Katerina Rudica, Head of Skills and Policy Campaigns at the uh, CIPD. She was a brilliant guest on our uh, on our, our show last year and she's here today to talk about one such programme, uh, Steps Ahead Mentoring, which fulfils this need. And I hope she's on the, uh, on the line there. Are you there, Katerina? Katerina. Yes, I am. Hi, Trevor. <laughs> Hello there. Hi. Are we facing a, uh, a structural problem with, uh, with, with youth unemployment at the moment, do you think? Yes, I think we are. As you said earlier, the figures have slightly improved. And what we've seen over the last few years is really a change in employer attitudes. So employers do realise that they have to, a role to play in tackling youth unemployment, not just obviously to help the young people and help society, but also in their own interest to build their talent pipeline. So that's the good news. The bad news is that there is still a structural issue and young people are still more likely to be unemployed um, than older workers. So we really need to do something to facilitate education to work transition right uh, and you got this scheme steps ahead mentoring would you be able to tell me a little bit about that yes of course just to remind you so the CAPD is the professional body for HR so our members uh, work work in uh, recruitment and, and different HR jobs so they're all HR professionals so what we thought HR is quite often seen as the gatekeeper to jobs so you know why don't we turn this on its head and and make HR part of the solution and it's a real no-brainer really Really, who would you like to talk to if you've never worked? Well, obviously the person in charge of recruitment. So what we're doing is we're recruiting our members, HR professionals, as mentors. So uh, our HR professionals volunteer to mentor a young job seeker uh, in their local area. And we work with Job Centre Plus. So we work with around 570 uh, Job Centre Plus centres across England. And, and it works really well. So it's face-to-face -face mentoring. And uh, the young person and the HR professional meet uh, over the course of sort of six meetings sometimes it's it's longer sometimes it's shorter and really what this is about is about job search interview techniques how to do a cv all those things you need to know when you're looking for work and um and it's working so um we've uh, run an extended pilot and seven out of ten of the people on that pilot have actually uh, found employment and and i think what michael earlier said around about mentoring is really interesting because we see this as well so it's called the double benefit so obviously it's helped the young person, the mentee, but what we find as well is that our mentors get a lot out of it, and I'm sure we'll hear more about this in the program later, but they develop their own skills, and um, obviously they find it very rewarding to give something back, and then they often go back into their own organisations and look what they're doing in terms of bringing young people into their organisations, so what we see is a real multiplier effect. Yeah. Yeah, and and, I mean, and and although we're going to hear a lot more from sort of mentors and uh, mentees, I mean, in terms of the successes, and they sound very you know profound to have that sort of seven out of out of ten sort of getting a job as a, as a, as a result. Yeah, the job centres we know do uh, work very very hard to uh, to help people get into employment. Is this a sort of is this what would you describe as say maybe an extra tool in their locker? I mean, do do you do you give uh, steps ahead mentoring is something that they can they can use as a tool in specific cases? Would you say? Um, yes, exactly. It's for those young people that maybe are not the first away from the labour market but need that extra push and help and insight. And there's uh, something uh, uh, really good about somebody taking out the time and doing this on a voluntary basis as well. And our programme is very tailored so the young person and the mentor sit down together and decide what it is they want to look at, what are the goals, uh, what, what does the young person really need to get a job. So it's very, uh, very tailored, very personalised and obviously that sort of face to face element that as a young person you talk to a real employer 
Right, brilliant. Okay, thanks, Katerina, for now. Uh, let's talk to a few mentors and mentees themselves. Now, Simon is a uh, mentor. He works uh, professionally for a, a well-known brand, and his job professionally is to develop future talent. Now, he told me that he has very strong personal as well as professional reasons for getting involved with Steps Ahead Mentoring. So, so basically, the, the thing that attracted me about the uh, program um, from a personal point of view was that I'd actually found myself um, in similar circumstances as somebody who, a long time ago admittedly, but um, who graduated um, and then found myself um, uh, unemployed for uh, about nine months right. thereafter. And I can remember that that was a really scary um, time and, and inevitably um, you know, led to me and indeed my family questioning the wisdom of having gone to university and uh, not followed the path that um, some of my friends had done, which was to go straight to work. And um, um, that even though in those days, uh, these are, these are pre-tuition fees days, but nevertheless, I came out of university with a, with a debt. Yes. Um, and um, the, the whole um, question, fundamental question, therefore, of, you know, did I make a huge mistake uh, by going to university and getting a degree? Because here I am now, unemployed, and more to the point, I had no um, clear advice on, on really what to do next. Yeah. And, and quite frankly, um, I was I was motivated um, by the fact that I didn't want my university experience to have been a waste of time. Yeah. Um, by the fact that I, I really, you know, my my ambitions, um, whilst they've been knocked, uh, haven't been completely uh, eliminated by my uh, uh, failure to get a job. Um, yeah. And also, I wasn't the only one, um, so just to give away my age, we're talking about the mid-80s, <laughs> um, when there was a fair old um, uh, uh, degree of, of graduate unemployment, not as much as today, admittedly, but yeah. nevertheless, it was by no means the case that you'd automatically get a job. Yeah. Um, so, so really lacking that advice and then, you know, reflecting on, would I have benefited from somebody yes. um, providing me with, with informal um, help and, and steering me in the right direction? The simple answer is, of course, I would. Yes. Um, so I, th I saw Steps Ahead really as an opportunity for, for me, with, with my experiences, both personally and professionally, to be able to, to um, provide young people with that kind of support that I wish I'd had. Without boring you with the detail, a fundamental part of leadership training um, includes uh, what we call legacy. Um, and legacy um, is all about, you know, uh, ensuring that we are developing the next generation of leaders. Yeah. Um, so uh, mentoring um, is very much a part of, of what we do. And, and here within my division, within um, corporate HR, uh, we have a policy whereby uh, we seek to provide uh, mentors to, to all of our people. Um, it's not compulsory, but the value of it is is um, known widely enough for everybody really to, to go looking for it mm -hmm. uh, as an opportunity. And I'm currently mentoring three people um, within uh, within the team here. Um, and indeed, I've, 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 I've got a mentor myself, um, right. so I, I can see it from both ends of the spectrum, both how it's, it, you know, it's, it's um, helping me personally and professionally um, in my role as a mentor and indeed as a mentee. Uh, well, there's Simon. He's a very busy boy, I think. Uh, I mean, we'll be coming back to uh, Katrina Rudiger in just a moment. But actually, we've decided what we're going to do is actually just talk a little bit about what's the experience of mentoring like. Now, I talked uh, to a local Hatfield business, but a very well-known one, Computer Centre, and their group HRD, Barry Hoffman, took me through his recent mentoring experiences. And it became clear as we chatted that uh, Barry soon started to learn as much from younger people as they did from him. I was introduced to a guy, uh, my first mentee, who had applied for lots of roles and not been successful at even getting an interview. Yeah. Uh, he and I met. Um, I think it's fair to say that he wasn't really prepared for the world of interviewing. I, I think he, he needed some help with his um, approach and presentational skills and, and we, we chatted generally and it turned out that he was a musician and a very good one and was in a band and when I asked him about how he approached the, the gigs that he did and how often he rehearsed and who he rehearsed with and the kind of persona that he adopted when he was in his band 
the, that suddenly clicked and he had a bit of a light bulb moment about how he approached an interview for a, for a mm. job mm. and he worked to rehearse and to put on his stage persona and um, find out and, and explore the job and the opportunities in the way that he might explore the lyrics of a song and actually kind of feel um, the, the music and, and feel the job and the opportunity. Um, it, it all started, suddenly clicked into place for him and um, he then got an interview and, and subsequently a job. So, okay. um, what sort of jobs was he going for then? Uh, he, he had done a degree in something like aeronautics. Tell me about the second one. Yeah, I've only met with him once so far, um, and I suppose this one did actually change my thinking. Well, not change my thinking, but brought something to light. So the guy that I've met, uh, and he's devoutly Muslim. Okay. And uh, uh, very bright, doing accountancy, I think, and uh, just, uh, you know, wanting some help with, with employability skills. And that, that has really brought to life the agenda that we talk about so often in HR around diversity and inclusion, yeah. which can be quite theoretical, statistical, and distant, and all of a sudden I'm sat in front of someone who, in his spare time, memorizes the Quran against mm. the kind of geopolitical context landscape that we have, yeah. um, presents you with something actually quite unexpected and, and mm. something which you need to deal with quite sensitively. Yeah. Um, and mm. how, how does somebody, how, how do I advise someone who's got these strong religious beliefs mm. if they're going for an interview? That, that was hard. That was, uh, that's a hard thing to do. And um, uh, so I guess it, it made me think that this is about diversity and how real it yeah. is for um, small businesses and large businesses and how we need to do more than pay off lip service to diversity and inclusion yeah. programs. We genuinely have to think about people as human beings and their, and their differences and, and appreciate their differences. Cause yeah. This guy is clearly very bright, has a lot to offer, works incredibly hard um, and uh, wants to be in the workplace. Yeah. So okay. how do we make that happen for him is, is the challenge. So yeah. very, um, it's a very experience to be yes. I'm here with uh, Katerina Rudiger, Head of Skills and Policy Campaigns at the uh, CIPD. Katerina, let's just think about those two clips just now. Um, I mean, first of all, we take them in turn, uh, Simon, um, and he was giving some very personal, powerful, I think, personal and professional uh, reasons. Is that typical of a, of a mentor in, in your programme? Uh, well, Simon is one of our star mentors, and he has <laughs> helped many people into work. But I, I, but he is, in, in fact, he is is a typical mentor. A lot of them actually want to give something back and drawing on their own experience when they have been mentored in their lives, or when somebody just you know helped them to get on the jobs ladder. And I think that's something we quite often forget that all of us we have started somewhere, and somebody along the way has helped us. And I think today employers tend to forget that you just need to give young person a chance so it's great when they're remembering this and 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 trying to give something back here and i think yeah you can see the success and i and I, he i was very interested that he then moved on to uh relate that to his his professional uh, uh life where actually uh it's it's very relevant to to what he does in in developing future future talent Exactly, and that's back to my earlier point. I think we're changing employer mindsets and behaviours in that way as well, that many of, of the mentors uh, that do this work in their organisations in similar jobs, so in recruitment and talent development in early careers, and it really helps them to understand the challenges young people are facing and, and, and in, 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 in turn makes them better at their jobs, quite simply. Yeah, uh, and, uh, and moving on to, to Barry. I mean, Barry sort of took on... Uh, two two um, uh, two two mentees, and you know one one sounds like almost as if you know he just needed that one conversation and then related it rather cleverly to uh, the world of music, where where a penny dropped effectively, and uh, and the guy could then start to you know adopt his, his on stage persona in terms of interviews as well as uh, as well as in his uh, his musical life. But he also got more than he he bargained for, and he got quite a challenge, if you like, in terms of in terms of thinking about you know issues you know, very important issues like like diversity 
Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting. Quite often, back to the point, the penny drops. Quite often, it's not 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 rocket science. It's just nobody had told them what to do or what not not to do in an interview. And it's about thinking about it differently. So I think again, it's quite typical what happened there. We see that a lot at young people just really don't know how to sell themselves in an interview and what employers are expecting of them. And then uh, as well, yeah, most of the mentors really do get something out of it. So I think it's a very interesting case. Um, uh, by told us about uh, diversity I think that happens quite often because you're sort of exposed to somebody who's you know coming from a different background perhaps has different experiences um, so so again I think it helps them with their day jobs. And Katerina, it's Claire here. And I mean, one of the other things, um, you, you know, sometimes when, when this, a story like that is told and you think that is very obvious, um, the, the advice that he gave them, but sometimes even just somebody being able to talk to someone older, somebody like Barry, and um, and probably just hearing their own thoughts out in the open probably can, can help them as well. Maybe people don't really have career officers or other people they can talk to about those things. So even something simple like that probably helps them. What do you think? Yeah, exactly. And it's very different if it's a teacher or a parents um, telling you what to do than somebody who has you know, obviously no vested yeah. interest, who's a professional, who, yeah. who does this on a voluntary basis. It's very, very different. So the young people tend to believe them more than they believe their parents or teachers obviously. So yeah. I think it's almost the messenger rather than the message in some cases. That's, I think that's right. It's a very important point actually that sometimes you need somebody with a with a bit of distance if you if you like a, a professional distance. Uh, uh, now uh, that's Barry and uh, before him Simon as, as a mentor but what's it like for a mentee? After the break we'll, uh, we'll be finding out uh, what it's like being a, a mentee in that in, in the situation where you've been out of uh, work for a while and perhaps you're confidence is getting knocked a little bit we'll be hearing uh, from uh, louis egan straight after this break the business sponsored by kingston smith chartered accountants at kingston smith our ethos is simple we want our clients to succeed welcoming owner managed businesses and individuals we pride ourselves on offering the local business community a range of services that best supports their needs for maximum growth Kingston Smith, helping our clients succeed. Find us on St. Peter Street in the heart of St. Albans. Or for more information, head to kingstonsmith.co.uk. Radio Verulam Community Partners. Mosaic brings together a group of singers based in and around St. Albans, each with a wealth of experience in a wide range of choirs in the UK and abroad. Mosaic have built a repertoire that covers pretty much everything from Renaissance polyphony to contemporary classics. Bird and Berlin, Victoria and Vaughan Williams, Gesualdo and Gershwin and many, many more. And they have pieced this all together to produce performances to the highest professional standards. The concerts they give each year provide you with good music, well sung, that is appreciated and enjoyed. For more details, visit mosaicchamberchoir.co.uk. For more on Radio Verulam Community Partners, go to radioverulam.com slash community partners. Join me, Tatiana Colombo, on the Radio Verulam sofa for the Sunday Supplement. Every week from 10 to midday, we'll have entertainment news, desert island dish, television highlights, and the sound of Sunday. That's the Sunday Supplement with me, Tatiana Colombo, from 10 a.m. to midday on 92.6 FM, Radio Verulam. If you want to get in touch with the business on Radio Verulam, phone us on 01727 839 926 or email thebusiness at radioverulam.com. Welcome back to the business. It's just gone half past uh, the hour. I'm here with uh, co-presenter Claire McAnulty and Katerina Rudiger, Head of Skills and Policy Campaigns at the CIPD. And we're looking at the subject of mentoring beyond the boundaries of your organisation this evening. What's the, uh, what's the business case and, uh, and, and, uh, and why, why should we do it? Now, just before the break, I mentioned Louis Zegan. Uh, let me tell you a bit more about him. Louis wanted to be a, a copywriter. But after graduating, he drifted from short-term work, um, various placements, into um, unemployment. 
he uh, he got involved with Steps Ahead mentoring after a we- period in which he felt, as many people do, that he was doing everything he could um, to to gain employment, but was just not able to to land the job that he wanted and uh, and needed. Louis told me all about his uh, about his mentor and what he got from the experience of mentoring. Uh, well, she worked in uh, the. She, she worked for government, she was HR, and she, so she didn't have any specific, like, experience in, like, what I wanted to go into, like, yeah. copywriting or that kind of thing, yeah. sort of things, but she did have very good experience in, sort of, self-presentation and that, certain things that I'd never, I'd never been taught at school, yeah. but, so, she, her background was, yeah, HR, government, so she knew how best to make your CV. I mean, my CV wasn't weak, but she knew just how to make it that much stronger and how to present myself in certain situations and what to talk about when and all kinds of things that were not the second nature to me whatsoever. So it happens once a week or once a fortnight, depending on her schedule, really, because I guess I wasn't exactly... I didn't even have a full diary. <laughs> so I, could, I was able to sort of fit in around her and she, we'd meet she came up her own time really so she was we'd meet in evenings at her and once a fortnight or hopefully once a week yeah. where it would be an hour or two where we sit and it was quite informal if I needed to cancel at the last minute or if she had something else to do yeah. she, it was it wasn't like a big structured thing and at the end of each session she'd be like oh so when's the feed coming next let's put it in the diary yeah. and maybe confirm a couple of days before yeah. Less like the dole in that if you miss that meeting, mm. you've got no money again. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's got a, a lot more leeway and a bit more understanding of, yeah. like, sometimes things do crop up that I need to be in, which may, may not directly affect my job search, but might help me in the future. Was there a particular focus of it? Generally, in broad terms, mean sort of interview skills. Not appearance, I'm a pretty smart looking guy, I guess. Um, but sort of, yeah, way I present myself, because in copywriting it's all about the way you're able to sell your own work. Mm. And having the confidence to be like, yeah, I, 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 I did do that, I did, I did all of that, I didn't did it on my own, or I'm able to do these certain things, I have this skill set that I can bring to the table, and I sort of had an issue with selling myself and the confidence issues in interviews really was my main thing because I never the only factor I'd ever had was in job interviews for jobs I never got yeah so it wasn't exactly the most confidence boosting like way to learn things if you know and you never kind of really find out why I mean you can email and say what what, sorry I just want a bit of feedback on my interview but nine times out of ten people don't bother with the extra 25 people who didn't get the job yeah yeah. As bad as that sounds, it's kind of kind of true. So no, it's very I mean, true. You're right. Yeah, and having that kind of opportunity to practice because at, at school you don't have it. You don't have this one-on-one time where you practice. Yeah. And at university, you definitely don't have it. It's, it benefited me hugely to sort of do a mock interview for a, yeah for a, like not really a specific job. But there was no questions about jobs, just questions about like general questions that I had never learned how to answer. Yeah. What sort of questions do you mean? So, talking confidently about my past experience and my people's skills, not related to work, but people skills and yeah. what I think my greatest strengths were and what my greatest weaknesses were and like a broad spectrum of interview questions, which you are never prepared for, really. Um, that was Louise Egan, who was uh, a mentee on Steps Ahead Mentoring Programme. I've, uh, I've got Katerina Rudiger uh, from the CIPD on, on the line. Katerina, listening to that clip, I, I, we were talking about it in the studio whilst that clip was on air, and we were saying, you know, it, it seems sort of beyond belief that somebody as together, as coherent as Louis would struggle to, to, uh, to, 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 to get a job in the first instance. But his story is very common, isn't it? Yeah, it re- it really is, and as you can see in the media, you know, we always hear about, and I know your show is a bit different, but quite often we hear about, you know, <laughs> young people being lazy or not wanting work, and all the people, and you know, we work, we now we've worked with over two thousand young people. They're all really, really keen, and they're all really, really good. They just need that extra help. They just need some insight on the 
unwritten rules of you know the workplace and interviews they just need some advice as Louis said how to sell their existing skills but also how to find out what are their strengths and weaknesses and it's interesting that um, Louis mentioned his mentor has no experience of uh, his uh, particular sector copywriting where he wanted to go into because that's something uh, quite often mentors come to us and say well you know but what do I have to offer um, mm. I only know about my sector not any other sector but that's not what it is about it's really about helping the young person to understand what their strengths and weaknesses are what it is they want to do and how they can convey this to an employer and how they can make the most of their extracurricular activities uh, their other interests because quite often young people don't have anything on their CV they haven't got a lot of experience so it's about uh, selling your personality and what you've got and they're not getting as Louis pointed out right they're not getting any feedback either they go into interviews and they don't know what it is they might have done wrong yeah I mean unfortunately quite often we do we tend to use the cop out to say you know <laughs> uh, it's the lack of experience so nobody is sort of sitting down and say like look you know it's the way you play with your pen in the interview or you didn't answer that question you know it's sort of it's very difficult to have those kind of conversations isn't it yeah. and that's why our mentors can it's kind of a safe space where somebody can say look you know the way you you you, you don't look me in the eye comes across as, as you know not very motivated that's what our mentors can do which is very difficult for employers to do when they provide feedback okay and and another thing that i noticed louis saying was he'd he'd never been successful at an interview so that's that's quite tricky if you've if you've only ever done interviews that you've not been successful at so trying to get over that must be quite difficult as well yeah, it's that vicious circle when you see that, you know, young people are in the labour market for a few months and their confidence really drops dramatically. Mm-hmm. They think, you know, they're never going to find a job because they don't think, oh, it's just that job I didn't get yeah. because maybe there was another candidate. They think it's them. They think they're never going to find a job. Yeah. OK, well, that's the, 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 the there's very clear benefits for mentors and mentees alike from getting involved in, uh, in programmes such as uh, Steps Ahead uh, Mentoring. But we're nothing if uh, not even handed on this show. And, there, and of course there are some understandable reasons why people might not want to take part in mentoring schemes, particularly outside their organisation. So I asked Simon, um, our mentor who we heard from other, for a, a sort of warts and all fears that he felt before he got involved in helping uh, young people uh, looking for work. My, my fears were um, all about the motivation of the young people themselves. Yeah. So um, for me the whole process stands or falls on whether or not the, the, the young person involved in the pro- is involved in the program by choice or because they, they've been forced to. And in that context, I was really quite apprehensive that they would have been told, your benefits are going to be stopped if you don't attend this program. Mm. Now, as it happens, that's not the case. Yes. It's, it's something that's offered to them as, um, uh, you know, um, a resource which is there if you want it. Um, the other aspect um, that I was apprehensive about as well was was, was how they would react to, to me as an individual. Mm. Um, and I think in, in, uh, I, have to, I have to say that I've not yet encountered anybody, mm. um, and I've mentored about six people now. Uh, I haven't met anybody yet who I would say uh, was there because they felt obliged to be there, that they, they felt they'd forced to be there. Yeah. Um, I think in in all of the cases they approached it not surprisingly a little bit cautiously yeah because it was a bit of an unknown quantity mm. and so the, the first thing that I've, I've tried to do in all cases is, is try to you know convey to them that I'm, I, my, my own experiences as I mentioned to you earlier yeah um, are, are such that I, I, I've got a good idea of the kind of emotions that they're going through yes, yes. Um, but also the fact that I've got um, uh, my eldest daughter is currently in her final year at university, and so uh, as a parent, I'm also very conscious of the, the pressures that are on um, undergraduates, mm. um, uh, uh, and the uh, you know the fact that she's now approaching that stage of right, what do I do next? Yes. Um, so I try to break down those anxieties that they've got by by coming across to them as um, you know. I'm I'm a little bit nervous about this as well, but at the same mm. time, I'm motivated to be here to help you yes. uh, as much as I can. But yes. at the same time, very importantly, um, to, from the outset, to emphasise that uh, sadly, I'd love to be able to, but I can't magic up a job for you. Um, my, my role is to is to basically equip you so that by the end of the process, hopefully, you'll feel 
that you've got uh, a better level of understanding and self-confidence and self-esteem yeah. um, to be able to uh, be more successful at finding work. Yeah. Um, my favourite story, my favourite anecdote that I tell people uh, when, when I'm encouraging them to, to, to join the scheme is about um, the, the guy who uh, was an unemployed graduate and he was looking to uh, pursue a career in design um, and is, 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 we, we, we spent um, um, several weeks building up his CV, which was already good, uh, but, but, but made it more effective. And then I said to him, right, the next phase is we're going to practice is interview skills. So what we're going to do is I'll, I'll give you a mock telephone interview. Mm. So in this particular case, we were, uh, I was asking him questions around um, a theme of um, organizational skills, creativity, entrepreneurship, all of those kind of things. Mm. Um, and he, he kind of, what, what came out in, in the course of the conversation was um, a, a level uh, of experience which wasn't reflected on his CV. And specifically at university, mm. uh, he'd managed uh, what had started out as a project, but what became a successful commercial venture uh, in the design and, and manufacturer of T-shirts. Mm. And he said very casually, very offhand, you know, and, and it actually became commercially quite successful and we got orders from, and he, he mentioned a couple of high street brands. Yeah. And, I, and I said, I'm, I'm just going to stop the interview there because this is all news to me. You haven't mentioned any yes. of this to, to yes. me in our sessions and it's not reflected in your CV. To which he said, well, I didn't think it was relevant. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a great example of how, you yeah. know, actually... Yeah. Some of them have got really relevant and interesting examples, yeah. which they're failing to, to understand the relevance of them to a potential um, employer, and obviously therefore failing to um, reflect those in their CVs. I think one of the key things to bear in mind as well is that their self-esteem has been quite yes. badly knocked yes. um, by, by the experience of, of not being able to get a job. Mm. Uh, or indeed, you know, if it's not, not if it's a job, it's not the, the, the career that they were hoping for, and, and that uh, low self-esteem can often mean that they undersell themselves and that, that they don't think that things that they've done are relevant. So, for me, a key part of, of the program mm. is to build up that self-esteem. Katerina, there's so much just in that clip that we could go to go, go through if we have more more time. But certain things sort of leap at you. What le- lo- what leapt out uh, for you in that clip? Well, obviously that story uh, uh, about this guy selling uh, these 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 T-shirts and not realizing how relevant it was, and I think that's one of my favorite stories as well. But again, I think it's quite typical uh, that young people have done something which is highly relevant uh, to an employer, but just don't really think about it in those terms. I think the other point in terms of you know it being voluntary, that's really really important yes. for us because obviously our mentors, our volunteers, you know, they only want to be with somebody who wants to be there so we're very clear with the job centers that it needs to be voluntary but I think one of the issues we're facing really is sometimes young people don't really realize what a mentor can bring to them and especially an HR mentor so and as you've actually worked you obviously don't know what an HR professional does so that's sort of one of the challenges on our side really is how do we communicate to the young people that that's such a great opportunity and you know for us it's always really painful to see when young people don't t- take that opportunity up and sign up and then don't meet with the mentor and drop out so that's you know that's that's one of the challenges we face but when the people uh, take part they're always super keen to be there and you know we have brilliant outcomes yeah great and we're going to move on to uh, another old enemy of uh, of you know that that sort of promotes inertia in these things is 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 the oldest enemy of all time the people say we don't have enough time to do this uh, and does that apply to uh, mentoring well Barry Hoffman uh, sort of would beg to differ on that as, as you remember he was the group HRD from Computer Centre and he thinks that uh, that mentoring is, is not a big investment of time at all and it has some very positive consequences It's not an intense relationship I mean yeah. it's not um, the sort of thing where you need to be meeting someone every week for six months that's not what mentoring is about it's, no. Um, no. it's kind of small injections of um, expertise yeah. and guidance and experience yeah. um, for somebody to take and act on in the way that they, they want to so yeah. it's not some kind of remedial program or, or coaching program it yeah. is genuine mentoring yeah well, it's massively satisfying. It's one of the things mm. that I do 
in my job that I don't have to do. But actually, I don't have to do this. And, and you're setting somebody off in their career mm. for life. Um, and you feel like you've made a real contribution and making a real difference to somebody. And that's immensely rewarding. This is not a massive commitment. Now, like I said before, you're not signing up for once a week, every six weeks sort of thing. You, yeah. you know, this is a relatively small investment of your time. It's a great way of sharing your experience, your connections. It's hugely rewarding to see people who benefit <clears throat> from the help and the guidance that you offer as a mentor. Um, I, I, I can't see any reason to not do it. It's, it's great for your own personal development. It helps you to think, helps you to understand what people are going through when they're looking for a job. You, you also get to learn stuff as well. I mean, you know, I've, I've met two people and I've learned from them. Mm. So I, I can't see why you wouldn't do this. I, I, would, I would urge anyone who's thinking about it to just get on with it. Okay. It's, it's, um, it's a fantastic scheme. Well, that's brilliant. Okay, and, and the, the final question, uh, if you could sum it up in one word, what would it be? Um, I would probably say rewarding. Because okay. I think it's rewarding for the mentor, and it should be rewarding for the mentee as well, because they should end up being um, better for the, for the experience, uh, okay. as should the mentor. So I would go with, if you want one word, I would go with rewarding. Barry makes some great arguments there against uh, the old inertia, the old enemy time, doesn't he, Katerina? Um, certain things he says about injections, small injections of time and so on. Um, it, it's very true, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. I mean, Barry is just such a great role model. He's not only an HR director, he travels a lot as well because a lot of his, his work commitments are outside the UK and he is a CIPD board member. So really, really busy man. And yeah, he's taking out the time to do this. And think about his staff. I mean, if your HR director does that, again, it's such a wonderful role model. And I think that's what we see uh, more widely now that actually at sort of a senior level at organizations, uh, uh, people endorse volunteering. And that's sort of something we are moving towards to helping organizations to realize that it's good for employee engagement, good for staff development, and that they should su support their employees in doing this. Because obviously it's much better when your employer is bought into this absolutely and i love that bit at the end just get on with it he said um and and i and i i, I couldn't agree more really it's that i think sometimes you can prevaricate about all these uh, all these uh, these things we're just going to go back to uh, simon our, our mentor from uh, uh, who's made a couple of contributions all, already uh, and just to just sort of hear from him what he really got out of uh, the experience of uh, of, of mentoring well, from my point of view, it, it's, it's been great because um, uh, it's enabled me to um, get a better understanding of, of the challenges that, that, that young people um, today uh, face, um, which, you know, despite the fact that, as I said right at the beginning of, of, of our job, um, I've yeah. been through a similar experience all those years ago, yeah. the fact of the matter is that it is different today. Uh, yeah. We've got record levels of uh, graduate unemployment. They've yeah. got these huge debts that they have to carry forward. Um, there's a massive amount of pressure on them, and I think that that, that uh, aspect of it, um, my understanding of it, has been increased uh, by participating in the programme, which in turn has helped me uh, to uh, get a, a better understanding of what, therefore, we need to do as an organisation to position ourselves um, and, and ensure that, that we are able to source the best talent uh, and, and we don't have any um, organisational or cultural barriers, for example, that would stop somebody who is in the, the, the context of having not secured employment immediately, um, that they're not excluded from, from being able to apply and, and come to work for us. So, Katerina, we're, we're getting down to it now in terms of, you know, there are some real tangible, positive reasons for employers even perhaps doubting employers you know initially to actually get involved to get stuck in and get on with it as uh, barry was saying and uh, and get involved with this and simon outlined them uh, superbly didn't he yeah, he did indeed. So it's not just about the mentor's own skills development. There are also organisational benefits, and many organisations worry now about talent pipelines and skill shortages, and perhaps struggle to bring in the next generation. And this can really help you to understand how you do that. I mean, it's even sort of simple things like how do you interview a young person with no work experience? You know, obviously you wouldn't necessarily want to do a, a, an interview where you ask about previous experience, and yet that's what many employers do. And then 
and they wonder why they don't get uh, the right candidates through. Yeah. So it's kind of this change in mindsets and attitudes, really, that is helped by mentoring. Right. Um, I, I suppose that the, the point about any programme is to is to be successful. So let's just, just mention again. So Steps Ahead Monitoring, you mentioned this very this staggering sort of success uh, uh, rate in getting young people into work. And now you're, um, you're, you, it's had a lot of success and you've attracted sort of sponsorship and funding. funding. Can you tell us a little bit about that as well? Yes. Yeah, so we started with a very small pilot uh, and really we're overwhelmed with the success and the sort of buy-in from our membership. So if you now scaled it up, we have an online portal that automates the registration and matching of mentors and mentees. So very efficient. We work with uh, all the job centres across England and we have over 2,000 uh, mentors on our books now and who can have multiple mentoring relationships. But again, we're, we're still recruiting mentors every day. And, and yeah, we've been really pleased that we had some funding from uh, the Cabinet Office uh, channeled by Anesta. So that has really helped us to scale this up. I mentioned earlier, it's quite difficult for us to communicate to the young people the benefits. So we've been able to invest in some uh, communications and marketing material because that's very important that we target the young people that directly and and yeah so we've been uh, uh, very pleased uh, with the results really and now we're even starting to think about uh, mentoring uh, extending our mentoring program to different groups so perhaps um, older workers sort of 50 plus uh, women return us to work so there might be other groups we can help and again back to I think Barry's earlier point, of, uh, point about workplace diversity uh, again I think there's the double benefit of helping those groups into work but yet also so broadening uh, our HR professionals' uh, horizons and, and changing their attitudes and behaviours. Okay, that that that's great, and I think that covering other age groups thing is great because it really broadens the scope of what mentoring, uh, you know, uh, is, you know, and and should be uh, about. Just a final word on uh, on steps ahead mentoring. Let's go back to our, our struggling uh, young mentee, Louis uh, Zegan. You remember that he was there for months trying to break into the world of uh, of copywriting. Well, what happened to him? So now I'm doing client presentations and pitches and stuff like that. And like oh, yeah. sort of this time last year, yeah. I never in a million years would sort of have the nerve, not the nerve, have the the confidence or or confidence in yourself mm. to be able to do that throwing yourself at the deep end with a little bit of practice uh, on my my trial period as for a full time job they're the top 10 design agencies in the in the UK I think now got announced the other day which is quite nice so is that an internship um, or you said it's a trial but is that a sort of um, internship an apprenticeship or is it, or is it just uh, yeah a, well it's paid yeah but it's, I'm getting a I'm getting a salary as it were for it but it's sort of like a yeah, like a period of but well, I've only got two weeks left so I should find out pretty soon if it's going to be carried on yeah and I've sort of been given the green light without any having signed anything so I'm feeling pretty confident about it I mean it's not set in stone but I yeah. feel pretty good I sort of found you're not really aware of it while you're doing the process but I found out that I was sort of one of about 50 or 60 people that were up for it and then one of 30 who were met and then one of Christine, who I met again, and then eventually they, I was the one who mm. made it through to the position. What was your winning card? I, I think having a good body of work didn't go amiss, but also having the the ability to present that work and be really methodical. Like before, I was sort of worried that I was talking for too long or taking up too much of someone's mm. time or kind of stupid things that now I look back on like what the hell was I thinking and uh, I kind of got the confidence to sort of sit through and talk through why I did certain things in the way that I did and had the confidence to sort of push back on certain things and like have certain answers to questions not prepared but a few things I knew that's what I wanted to talk about and able to sort of direct the conversation to the, yeah. my strength. And, and yes, I know the listeners will be wondering what happened to Louis. He was, he was in terms of two weeks away uh, from having his placement confirmed. Well, I'm very happy to tell you that he's now working as a, as a, a copywriter at Moving Brands. So well done to, to him. Yes, well uh, done. Uh, working with a mentor made a big difference to him, didn't it, Katrine? I mean, just think those stats he said. He got a placement. He was one of 50 or 60 candidates at the start. 
Yeah, that's really fantastic. And obviously, it makes us very happy. One of our mentors has sort of summarized the mentoring and saying mentoring is revolutionizing somebody's life. And I think that's sort of a great way of putting it. You know, you might not have to put a lot into it, but, you know, you can see with Louis that, you know, it really did, did change his life. So I think that's just fantastic. And you don't often think about HR people in that way. You don't think <laughs> about HR revolutionizing somebody's life. So I think for us, it's really great as the professional body for HR to be able to do that and to our purpose is to champion better work and working lives and I think what we see our members doing really is that so and we just enable them to do that so it's fantastic. Right and, and uh, just a sort of final question to you I mean this program's been uh, uh, an outstanding success your steps ahead mentoring program um, now uh, what would you say as a final sort of quick parting shot to uh, employer? If you had a employer standing in front of you right at this moment, uh, and you've got some of them listening, of course, I mean, what would you what would you say as the sort of single best reason why they should get involved in a in a mentoring scheme? single best reason well, it helps you to build your talent pipeline and engage your staff. As simple as that. Right. Okay. Short and sweet. <laughs> uh, excellent. Katerina Rudiger, I mean, just uh, quickly, could you say how people can get in contact and find out about Steps Ahead Mentoring? Yes, of course. Uh, you just have to have a look on our website. Um, and uh, to, to become a mentor, you have to be a CIBD member. So, um, yeah, get in touch with us to talk about membership. Okay, that's brilliant. Katerina, thank you ever so much. Now, a final word from uh, Simon, our, uh, our featured mentor. Um, his scheme was, uh, was uh, for HR professionals, of, of course, the, the one steps ahead mentoring that we've been looking at. But his comments also have a more general relevance around mentoring. What would he also say to convince others? And his answer was very direct and very powerful. Do it. Because it is, it is very, very uh, valuable to you in terms of building up your interpersonal skills. Um, and especially if you're uh, in HR, um, uh, it's a great way of passing on those skills that you've developed from uh, a, a recruitment perspective. But in general terms, do it because um, it's an easy, in inverted commas, way for us uh, as HR professionals to put something back. Um, these young people really need help. And, you know, from a purely altruistic perspective, if we continue to see the levels of youth unemployment rise, then it's going to have an adverse impact on every single one of us. So do you know what? We've all got a stake in this and let's, let's do it. And do you know what? We couldn't have put that better our, ourselves, I think. You know, if you look outside the walls of, uh, of, of every business uh, and you can start to appreciate, hopefully a bit through this show and the fantastic contribution from Katerina this evening and from, uh, from Simon and Michael Moran uh, and, and Louis and, uh, and Barry, how much we can actually gain from mentoring. There is a genuine business case for mentoring outside of your own business and we hope we've uh, made that point today. So thank you also to Claire McEnulty, my co-presenter and uh, look forward to talking to you all next week the business sponsored by kingston smith chartered accountants if there's anything in the show you want to talk to us about phone us on 01727 839 926 or email the business at radioverilum.com